Hi everybody, it's Adam with HeartValveSurgery.com and this is a special surgeon question and answer session all about Ross procedure reoperations. I am thrilled to be joined by Dr. Michael Ibrahim, who is a leading cardiac surgeon at Penn Medicine in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. During his extraordinary career, Dr. Ibrahim has performed over 3,000 cardiac procedures with more than 2,000 involving some form of heart valve repair or heart valve replacement. Dr. Ibrahim, it is great to see you again and thanks for being with us today. Thanks for having me, Adam. It's great to be here and with your patients on heartvalvesurgery.com. Yeah, Dr. Ibrahim, we're answering not one, but two questions from Joe, and they're all about Ross procedure reoperations. And here's the first one. Joe asks, hi, Adam, I'm considering the Ross procedure. As this operation is a double valve replacement, if a reoperation is needed in the future, do you know which valve tends to fail first? the aortic, or the pulmonary? Great question. Let's take a step back for a moment and just uh, review what the Ross operation actually uh, does. It is an operation for aortic valve disease, for aortic stenosis and aortic regurgitation. Um, and what it does is it takes the mirror image heart valve in your heart, the pulmonary valve, and it places it in the aortic position. So getting rid of your old aortic valve. And in the pulmonary position, uh, a homograph, which is a, a valve from a patient that's passed away, is placed in there, a human natural valve. And um, really the benefit of the Ross operation is that it's the only operation which provides a living, sophisticated heart valve that can do all of the amazing things that your normal natural valve can do. And this has been shown to um, really have a bearing on clinical outcomes. So it's the only operation for aortic valve disease compared to mechanical or tissue valves that restores normal life survival. If you should require a reoperation on one of the heart valves that's been operated on, it's likely to be the aortic valve, the new aortic valve. But the chances of that are low. Um, within 15 years after the operation, only about 30% of patients will require a reoperation. Um, and on the pulmonary valve, if the operation is done correctly in the way that it was originally described, less than 2% of patients will require a reoperation on the on the um, right side of the heart. Dr. Ibrahim, that is fascinating and encouraging data about the long-term durability of the Ross procedure. But Joe has a very important follow-up question. I'm sure lots of patients are wondering if the Ross procedure does fail, can the defective aortic or pulmonary valve be replaced using a non-invasive TAVR? The short answer is yes. Um, transcatheter uh, valve replacement through the groin um, is now the primary way of replacing failing Ross um, pulmonary valves on the right side, if that happens, which is rare. Um, and on the on the left side of the heart and the aortic side, it can also be uh, uh, used. Um, but, you know, one of the things is that sometimes Ross patients uh, are so young that when they come to reoperation, if that occurs, it may not be the best option for them, but it is certainly one option. Dr. Ibrahim, I love how you brought in not just the fact that there's a potential for a transcatheter valve replacement for the aortic or failing pulmonary valve, but the idea of the long-term management of valve disease, shared decision-making for younger patients because a SAV or a surgical aortic valve replacement may be best for that patient, if I understood you right. Is that correct? I totally agree, and I think it's all about you know, giving patients the correct information, making sure that they're comfortable, they're seeing an expert who can offer all options, and then uh, making a decision that respects the patient's preferences and wishes for their life. Well, Dr. Ibrahim, I hope that helped Joe. I know it helped me. And I can't thank you enough for taking time away from your very busy practice there at Penn Medicine in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and sharing all this great insights with our community. Thanks for being here today. Thank you. Hi everybody, it's Adam. I hope you enjoyed that video. And don't forget, you can always subscribe to our YouTube channel. Watch the next two educational videos coming up on your screen or click the blue button to visit heartvalvesurgery.com.